You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today we have something new and exciting for you. We have um, an employer forum on the Workforce Training Fund. Doesn't sound exciting, but I promise you it is. <laughs> and we have Fernando Martinez mm -hmm. here to talk about it. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome. to Brockton. Thanks so much for having me. Great thanks, being here. Thanks for coming down. Um, you're doing a good thing. Um, end of January uh, 29th, mm -hmm. 9 to 11. Tell us about it. Tell us what you're trying to do. Great. So we're working with um, with the Chamber of Commerce here, Massasoit Community College, um, Workforce Investment Board, the Career Works, the Center, um, to try to attract businesses to this thing called the Workforce Training Fund Program. Um, the Workforce Training Fund Program is a, is a state funding mechanism that funds um, incumbent worker training. So if you have a work, if you have workers who need to learn a new production method or learn lean manufacturing or, or something like that, you could use WTFP funds to to fund that kind of training. Um, it, the, tr the, the funding source, every business that pays unemployment insurance pays into the Workforce Training Fund program every payroll they roll. So if you're a business and you pay into the unemployment insurance system, that money is yours. That's money that, that you and all the other businesses pay that's uh, eligible to get to get for you to get that, some of that back for training. Um, so what we're trying to do in this forum is bring businesses in and around Brockton to learn about the Workforce Training Fund program um, I'm with an organization called English Works Campaign, which is part of an organization called English for New Bostonians. And, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase access for limited English-speaking adults to, to high-quality English classes. And one of the things we've seen is through the workplace, um, if the classes are offered by, through the workplace and funded the WTFP, um, a lot more people who are on that waiting list that we were speaking about earlier um, would have access to English classes. Not only that, they would also increase the, their product productivity in the workplace, the relationship between themselves and the business. Um, and we just think it's a win-win, these, these workplace ESL classes. So. Well, we have a great uh, start. We've worked with our mayor's office mm -hmm. to do uh, ES, ESOL and ESL um, for TV. Okay, right. and it was right in Career Works where we did it. Our uh, director of communications, so Mayor Carpenter, did that, and uh, we did it in conjunction with him and put it on TV. So we'll talk about other things sure. too. But um, you know, there's a waiting list. There's a huge waiting list in Brockton. I'm sure there is in Boston too. Yeah, and there's enormous. not a lot of locations. So this is another way to do it. This is another way to broaden the, the scope. And you know, I I, I don't think uh, I took this a different training a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it existed. I didn't even know it was there. Mm. Um, and like you said, it's your money that you're already paying into the system. So why not tap it? Why not utilize it? Exactly. Yeah. And that and that's the whole point. Um, and we're and frequently, you know, people people don't know about this. I mean, they they might have heard Workforce Training Fund. It's only been around for I think about like maybe 20 years or something. So you know, people people just don't realize that the money that they're paying is available for them to use. And we hope, use for, for training workers in English. So let's take a small business like us. Okay, okay. we pay unemployment taxes. There's five of us full-time. Mm -hmm. There's three to four, depending on the season, part-time. So we're right. under 10. We're right. small, okay? Uh, we haven't had a lot of people tap it because we tend to have longevity. But there, you know, people leave, you know, people collect, whatever. Um, what would I be eligible for something like that? I'm sure there's a whole formula to it, and, you're right. gonna, and it's going to be explained in the seminar, but right. can, can you walk me through it a little bit? Sure. Um, so if, say if you wanted to hold a training for your workers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what, what your particular trainings are, but for the purposes of my argument, we'll say English, um, yeah. even though obviously you, you speak fluently, and I know everyone here does as well. Um, it, what, what you could do is you, you would first contact us, and you would say, English works. You know, I'm interested in having English training for my workers. Um, I don't know how to fund it. I don't know how to, to plan it. Um, what, what do I do? And so what the English Works campaign would do is we'd help you in three ways. Mm -hmm. The first way we would help you is we would connect you with um, English language providers. Uh, we have a list on our website, uh, english-works.org, that has a lot of, uh, that has a list of like 35 ESOL, or English for Speakers of Other Language providers um, across, the, across the state. So we would link you up with one of those that has uh, experience teaching English for in, in the workplace. The second thing we would do is we would help you navigate um, applying for the Workforce Training Fund program. Um, for a business that's small, ten, like 10 employees and under, there is an option to do what's called a consortium grant, whereas if you apply with uh, a group of small businesses and you all have similar needs, so say there are other businesses around here that need English training, you could apply as a group th to the Workforce Training Fund program and host a, host a training either at, on, at this site or at another site, mm -hmm. um, and you could cover all your needs that way. 
Um, so the, th the third thing we do is we provide ongoing technical assistance for, for workplace usable programs, um, the English Works campaign. So if you, know, if you have a question, if you're trying to plan out precisely what, you know, what should be offered and when it should be offered, mm -hmm. um, you have any more procedural questions, we're, we're there to help as well. Just going to reverse it for a minute. I'm curious. Sure. Now you get my curiosity peaked. Do we do it the other way around? If we have people we serve mm -hmm. that speak another language, I have one staff member that's fluent in Haitian Creole, mm -hmm. but I don't have staff members that are fluent in Cape Verdean Creole. Right. Is are there are opportunities to get trained for the people that speak English to be able to talk to the people that don't? Actually, you know, I've I've heard that question a lot. Mm -hmm. um, through the Workforce Training Fund program, um, I have I've never heard of a foreign language training, but I do know that they they exist, and I do know that they are providers who will teach foreign language training. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any record recollections at the top of my head. We mainly do ESL um, because, as you said, there's such a, the, the, the need for people to speak English mm -hmm. um, is, is a lot higher in this economy and in this society than the need to speak another language. But um, if, if it's the question as to whether WTFP would be available to fund that, um, I, if you could draw up an application and present it to the and submit it and present it to the board, I don't, I don't see why they wouldn't. Because that's it. my biggest regret in life. I didn't learn the other languages. I was telling you the story before we went on camera that right. I, I, my father was born in Cuba. Mm -hmm. My mother wasn't. She was born in Boston. So right. Spanish wasn't spoken in the home. And they used to talk at my grandmother and my father when they didn't want us to know what they were saying. <laughs> right. I went to school in Miami. Right. I still didn't learn Spanish. In spring break senior year, I came home and the cable company was hiring. The rest is history. Yeah. So if I knew another language, and I tell my students at Massasoit, the reason I asked the question about the um, us taking the training is Massasoit does offer Haitian Creole and Cape Verdean Creole. Oh, I'm okay. sure the associations do, the Cape Verdean Association, the Haitian Association. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a way for us to serve people better. So I'm, I'm going to explore that. Um, I know we're going to, we want you to go to this event. This event, Thursday, January 29th, 9 to 11, at the Chamber. It's in that big conference room, I'm kind of assuming. Yep, with which the probably has a capacity, I'm going to say, maybe 50, 60 people, yep. something like that. Uh, there's a whole registration process. Um, the contact number on here is Franklin... Peralta? Yep, that's my colleague. He's the campaign director. Okay, and the phone number is 617-982-6863, and he's F. Peralta, P-E-R-A-L-T-A, at English for New Bostonians dot mm -hmm. org. It's we're gonna we're gonna get you to add Brocktonians to that at some <laughs> point too, but that works. And it's at the chamber, Baywib, Career Works. English Works, everybody, Massasoit, all working together. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts? We got uh, maybe a minute left? Yeah, no, I mean, I know that Brockton has become an increasingly diverse city. Um, and as, as you were mentioning, there's it, the waiting list for ESOL classes for adults alone is, is thousands deep. I mean, um, it's, it, there's a long, long waiting list and there's a huge need. And, and we at English Works, and we know that we, we, I speak for the Metro South Chamber and Massasoit and the Workforce Investment Board as well, um, we believe that businesses have a really key role in, in helping workers achieve their, their goals of economic self-sufficiency through learning English. And the best place to do that, we think, is the workplace. Um, and especially if you can tie it into any particular worker vocabulary that they have, um, it really is a, a win-win. It ends up you end up making a bigger return on your investment than if your employees don't learn English. Well, so. we're going to follow up with you more, and we're going to attend the event, and we'll get you some clips of it, but you're going to go there. Yes. Right? It's more important to go there. So, so thanks for being on. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.